everybody. I was looking at my um, I'm a YouTube channel over the weekend, and I was on about like 997 subs on Sunday, and checked today, and I'm finally on a thousand. Thanks to everyone who's subscribed. Thanks to everyone who's been on the channel and watching the videos and liking and supporting everything I've been doing. It's been yeah, it's been great. I've been absolutely enjoyed the year doing this and you know making videos all year. I didn't expect from the first video I made. Um, that some of my videos get like over 24,000 views in the first year. And I didn't expect that I'd be on, yeah, 1,000 subs within a year. Now on 1,000 subs, one of the videos that I wanted to do for a while is rendering in Marmoset, but using your CC3 characters. Um, so yeah, Marmoset, very simple software to use and quite a lot of people like to use it for portfolio work but cc3 if you don't have iray then it is very difficult to get a good render out of it so some people have been like oh how do you get a mom that render um to look decent and yeah i'm gonna show you out so get your character file export fpx make sure it's maya embed textures max texture size 4096 current pose um don't delete hidden faces, but you know, you can choose a pose and everything like that. Um, so yeah, you can do like a model pose or something like that. It poses it for you and takes it straight to Marmoset. But if you delete faces, it gets very weird. I'm not sure why. Um, yeah. So in Marmoset, this is my, you know, character all set up. Resolution, if I go to double resolution. Yeah, that's my character rendered in Marmoset. So people are like, oh, how do you get the uh, textures to look, you know, as they do? And how do you set up the textures properly in Marmoset for it? The clothes is relatively simple. So when you go in here, you have, you know, your FBM textures, your normal textures for skin, stuff like that. But here, so if you go into where you saved your Reillusion products, go into Shared Templates, go into Digital Human Shader Resource, RL CC3 Plus or CC3, depending on whether yours is a plus or a normal character, is your subsurface scattering stuff. So when I go to my head, here you have your subsurface scatter, you have your um, scatter depth, translucency, all that stuff, right? So what I usually do is go CC3+. Plus. You can see that's the head mask. So what I did is move that mask over to here. Scatter depth, as you can see that changes. You have it around, what is it, 2.4 is what I usually do it, or is it 1? Yeah, I usually have about 1. You can change it depending on what, what you prefer, what looks good. But yeah, I could do like 1.9 maybe. Yeah, I could change it. And your translucency map is, where is it? Head transmission. So that's your translucency. Bring that over. I usually have my settings at translucency depth of 120.4 and my translucency scatter of 0.618, translucency is 1.0. So those are sort of the settings I have for it. We will find with the, so you, now you go into textures and you go into um, character, you go into character body, you go into head. In theory, when I think the new one actually exports everything with it. So I think you can actually go into your where you export the character and find everything here. So, yeah, translucency map, subsurface scatter map. Your roughness, bring that over. As you can see, it's way too rough. Usually it wouldn't be inverted, so like that. Bring the inversion down, it still just doesn't look right. It's just like shiny. 
So you want to invert that and have it, you can have it a little bit high, maybe like 0.246, something. You can have it zero if you want, but yeah, I'd do like 0.2-ish to add a little bit of roughness on the face. Then what you want to do is this micro normal, you drag and you drop, actually firstly, you go to detail normal here instead of normals. Get your micro normal, drag that here. And then your normal map should be in your FBM folder. So you get your normal, bring that down there. With the micro normal, that actually adds all the skin pores and stuff like that. Um, so if you go in, detail tiling will make the tiling a bit bigger. I just changed the tiling of your, you know, your skin. Um, yeah, so that's that. You got your albedo, which you get. Diffuse, bring that in. Translucency for that one, yeah, choose like a darkish, oh, around that. Um, you can have RGB numbers, you can just copy that over if you want. Scatter depth, those numbers. Your metalness, is that going to be here or? Not body, let's go ahead. Yeah, metallic. Just bring that down to metallic. Uh, make sure these things on the side are detail normals, roughness, albedo, subsurface scatter on your diffusion. Reflectivity is metalness. Um, you can choose all these like reflection, uh, secondary reflection, like horizon occlusion, secondary glass, secondary intensity. Just mess around those. You can Choose my numbers if you want, or do whatever. Your occlusion, uh, click on that, click occlusion. And just bring your AO map down. And yeah, that's it for skin, really. You just do that for your head, your arms. Just turn that fog off. I did for the arms is pretty much the exact same thing. So micro normals is 15.93. Um, you bring your normal in, you uh, bring your roughness. Um, you can invert it and bring it down if you want it to be dry or on mine be a bit wet. So I chose full roughness, but inverted. Um, subsurface scattering did the exact same thing where I brought in the arms, um, translucency, scatter map, all those numbers, one for the translucency, one for the translucency depth, uh, 0.5 for translucency scatter, metalness brought that in, uh, occlusion. So all the, all the body parts pretty much exactly the same as the others. Um, you just bring the subsurface scatter in, you, you know, apply all the maps you're supposed to apply. Um, let's do eyelashes. So eyelashes, I brought in the normal, the roughness, the diffuse, uh, metalness, occlusion. Now with the transparency of the eyebrows, or the eyelashes, um, as you can see, they you know they look like eyelashes. Go into your should be in your FBM. FBM, eyelash, opacity, bring that in. Make sure translucence, translucency is dither and your channel is R. If you choose anything other than R, it's gonna look like that. So make sure the channel is R, you chose dither and you should get a transparent look to your eyelashes.
Hair exactly the same, so let's go into hair. With this, it's very different. Um, what I did here, because I had. With this, you got your hair, you have your base color, opacity, bump, roughness, AO. Diffuse color. Um, this is on digital human hair, so with your textures, you should get a hair specular map. What you're gonna do with that is um, save texture, put it somewhere. When you saved it over, you'll have a spec map. Now, what you do with that is you, know, you play roughness, you bring your albedo in. You bring your scatter map, so your specular map, into your subsurface scattering. Um, so you have your one there in scatter and translucency, the exact same map. That'll look like that. Um, just mess around with the settings a bit. You can choose my settings like if you want. Reflectivity. Choose your spec map, um, but choose in specular mask and rim light mask. Specular component 256, specular scale is 0.278, and rim light scale is 0.999. Just sort of changes the way the light acts on it, which, you know, if you get the right light settings on it, it could look really good. Then you got your occlusion and your albedo. <clears throat> Do the same with the, no, not albedo, um, occlusion and transparency. Again, if you want something to look transparent um, or look like hair, do dither and channel R and bring your opacity map in. One other good thing to do when you're doing hair is click on your hair mesh and click cold back faces to be off. That means your back faces will show. With the cornea, I've got the roughness, I've got the albedo, the metalness, so choose metalness. Um, occlusion, so let's go into the eye, eye occlusion, that's weird. Right. So with occlusion, go into your cornea, go into AO and play whatever AO on whatever maps you need to. Occlusion 1, diffuse, specular cavity. Transparency, I chose refraction. Um, index for refraction is 1.004. And your mask is your opacity. Yeah, with this, go into your, um, click roughness and do that as your mask. As you can see, the cornea is now like completely see-through, and it's got a little bit of um, it's got a little bit of shininess to it. So that's my settings for creating the cornea. And your eye, all you have to really do is do normal roughness and albedo. That's it. Eye occlusion. <clears throat> all you need is roughness, metalness, and alpha. Uh, or transparency, dither, channel R. Uh, let's go into eye occlusion. Yeah. Choose your metallic, uh, bring that into your opacity map and choose, uh, choose channel R. Your tier line, choose roughness, metalness and Yeah, and bring your opacity into it. So your opacity map into the dither. Um, yeah, it's a bit really clothing, relatively simple. Choose normal, roughness, albedo, metalness, and occlusion. Bring all that in, and you should have a pretty well presented character in Momzet. Um, it's very jumbled, but 
yeah, that was basically my overview of how to get your Enders in Marmoset tool bag from CC3 in case you don't want to buy IRA in case you do have Marmoset tool bag. Because um, sometimes the renders in here actually look quite good compared to using IRA. So, yeah. Uh, let me know. Let me know what you said. thought of that. Um, it's very jumbled. If it is confusing, just ask in the comment section. But yeah, I'm happy I got to 1,000 subs. And hopefully everyone enjoyed the sort of 1,000 sub special I did. Uh, if you like it, please like and subscribe. And hopefully I can get 2,000 in the next six months. But yeah, see how that goes. So I will, yeah, hopefully see you all in the next video. And yeah, thanks for supporting the channel. Thanks.